One day, while exploring near the lonely church, we see a large bottle towering above, off in the distance. As we crest a hill, we see more of these bottles, and eventually, we arrive at a ruined freeway. Just south of this freeway, we see a large parking garage, and as we get close to it, we pick up a new radio broadcast on our Pip-Boy, the Nuka-Cola Family Radio Signal. Remember, Nuka World is only open for a few more weeks in October. Come down and see me and Cappy one last time before buckling down for the winter. Don't forget to bring your empty bottle of Nuka-Cola to get $15 off at the gate. So hop aboard the Nuka Express and come and see the whole Nuka family while you still can. The Nuka Express is accessible through the Nuka World Transit Center. Parking fees will apply. Price is subject to change due to end of season. Nuka World, Nuka Express, and the Nuka Cola characters are all registered trademarks of the Nuka Cola Corporation. We see a large archway, and as we creep closer, no one investigates that signal until this place is secure. This is the voice of Commander Kaler, a gunner who was sent here by her superiors to find some missing gunners. This is part of a subplot that plays in the background while we explore Nuka World. I completely told that story in my video on the Gunners of Nuka World. So if you'd like to learn exactly why Commander Kaler was here, you can check out that video by clicking here. But to continue forward, we have to kill Commander Kaler, as well as her gunners and a Sultron. Having robotics expert comes in handy here, as we can hack the Assaultron and use it to take out most of these gunners. With the gunners dead, we can finally head towards the building, go down the escalators, and open the doors to the transit center. On the other side, we head down an escalator to see a wounded man leaning against some concrete. They're gonna die. What happened to you? Raiders. That's what... Those bastards have my family. You... you gotta help me. Please. Are you okay? Hell, I've seen better days. But it's my family I'm really worried about. Once those raiders realize I'm gone, I don't even want to think about what they'll do to them. God, you gotta help me. You look terrible. Tell me about it. I only help myself. What's in it for me? I can pay you. You bring them back safe and I'll give you everything I have. Hear me out. Tell me what happened. They fooled us. Big time. My family and I ran into some traitors a while back. Told us they knew a safe settlement at Nuka World. But when we got there, found out there are raiders the whole time. Just stringing us along. I managed to escape, but my wife and son are still back there. I wanted to get some help and go back for them, but didn't count on taking a bullet. Nuka World is still up and running? I remember that place. I wouldn't say it's still running. The place is run down, but those raiders sure got it made. Plenty of supplies, clean water, guns. Oh god. I never should have left. How did you manage to escape? There's not very many of them. Four maybe? Five? And with the amount of jet they were doing to celebrate, it was easy. Picked the lock on the cage they had me in, but one of them came barreling in before I was able to free my wife and son. My wife. Lisa told me to run, so I did. Now I just gotta hope it's not too late to save them. Your family is probably dead. Don't say that. I won't give up on them. I can't. That's what trust gets you out here in the Commonwealth. Sometimes hope kicks you while you're down. But sometimes, it lends you a hand. You're here for a reason. You gotta be. I turned on a transmitter here, hoping someone would come. I didn't think it worked, but... Here you are. It's gotta be a sign, right? So, please, I'm begging you. They're running out of time. If not for them, do it for the caps. You bring them back safe, I can pay you. I swear. What about you? Just leave me. My wife and kid are all that matters, you hear me? Tell me you'll do this. Does this mean you'll do it? All right, I'll help you. Oh, thank God. Here, take this. It's the password to the monorail control terminal. The fastest way to get to Nuka World is to take the Nuka Express, but I shut it down so those bastards couldn't follow me. 
Find the control terminal in the office to power it back up. And hurry! God knows how much time they have left. There is, however, another way to end this encounter. During our conversation, we found an option to offer this man a stim pack. Let me help you first. I have a stim pack. No, no. I'll be fine. Save it for my wife and kid. For Lisa and Cody. But he refuses. Why would a man refuse a stim pack? We could shrug our shoulders and continue on. Fine. It's your funeral. Hey, I'm not crazy. My family may need that stem pack more than me. I can't risk it. Now please, just find them. If not for them, for the caps. In which case we get dumped back into the previous dialogue tree, or we can press the matter. We find three options to express our suspicion at his rejection of our stem pack, and all three options elicit the same response from Harvey. I'm offering you a way to heal yourself. Why pass that up? You're not thinking straight. Maybe you hit your head. No, really. I have enough. Take it. Damn. Look, you got me. I ain't injured, okay? Just can't do this anymore. The raiders back at Nuka World put me up to this. They lure people in and kill them for fun, and I'm done doing their dirty work. Let them find me and do what they want. Why do you help them? Besides not wanting to die, I'm not the only one they got stuck under their thumb. If I don't pull through, their lives are at stake just like mine. I figure, what's some stranger's life compared to those people I know and care about? Sounds like typical raiders to me. You don't get it. These raiders are different. They make Commonwealth raiders look like a bunch of kids. Here, take this password and find the office with the control terminal. Power up those rails and you can see for yourself. Just don't say I didn't warn you. As for me, I'm getting as far away from this place as possible. If we choose this option, Harvey walks past us, heads up the escalator, and leaves the transit center. However, if we offer him our help... Let me help. I'll go face them. You don't have to die. Are you? You're serious? Just be warned. This ain't no walk in the park. Here, take this. It's the password to the monorail control terminal. The fastest way to get to Nuka World is to take the Nuka Express. But I shut it down to help sell my story. Makes it more believable if I say I'm trying to keep the raiders at bay. Find the control terminal in the office to power it back up. And once you're on your way, be careful. He walks off, but he stays at the transit center. In my game, he sat at a nearby park bench. But we have a third and final option. You tried to lure me into a death trap? <laughs> you're a dead man. Oh, come on! I was just doing my job! What Jesus, another creep! Well, well, that wasn't very nice. Killing an innocent man. You're one ruthless son of a bitch, aren't you? Tell you what, old Harv's got a password on it. Take it and use it to unlock the control terminal and power up the Nuka Express. The monorail will take you to Nuka World. If caps and killing are your thing, I got the offer of a lifetime for you. But only if you think you can handle it. And as the voice in the sky said, we find a control terminal password on his corpse. No matter how we got the password, we find the terminal it belongs to if we head west. Here we find a ticket booth, and in the back of the ticket booth, we find the Nuka Express control terminal, which we can unlock using the password. Inside, we find four options, choosing the first one, Monorail Schedule. We learn that the Nuka Express is expected to run every 15 minutes. This system automatically notifies corporate of all unauthorized delays. Employees are ferried to the park between 6 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. Then, the Nuka Express opens up at 9.45 to the public and ferries them to and from the park until 11.55 p.m. Well, the park sure was open late and it's closed from midnight to 6 a.m. The weekend schedule is a bit different. Employees were expected to arrive an hour earlier between Friday and Saturday, and that was likely to accommodate more early morning park goers who were arriving as early as 8.45 a.m. But like during the weekdays, the park was closed between midnight and 6 a.m. The next option, Power Grid Management, gives us three choices. First, we can activate the railway power, and this completes a part of the quest. We can now use the Nuka Express to reach Nuka World. But we find another option to activate the auxiliary power. All this does is turn on the pre-war Transit Center PA system. Attention! In the event of an emergency, remain calm and obey all safety and shelter instructions provided by Nuka World employees. 
thank you. The messages are interesting at first, but they soon get a bit repetitive. Backing out of this, we find a new option called Maintenance Requests. The earliest was from earlier in the month, before the bombs dropped, October 2nd, 2077. Clogged Water Fountain. This ticket was written by K. O'Rourke. Some kid shoved gum down the water fountain nozzle again. The task was assigned to G. Mackey, who commented, Removed disgusting fluorescent green gum from the nozzle. Recommend surveillance to hunt down and punish repeat offender. Permanent ban from park would be ideal. This is the sixth time. Well, it sounds like we have a chewing gum villain on the loose. Nuka World is proud to announce the grand reopening of our World of Refreshment ride. Now featuring delicious Nuka Cola Quantum. Five days later, on October 7th, we find a ticket called Announcements Repeating. This ticket was submitted by P. Reading. Repeating? P. Reading? Announcements over PA are stuck on the same announcement about Nuka Cola Dark. This also was assigned to G. Mackey, who responds, Rebooted horribly wretched announcement system. Recommend a punishment of death for its detestable creator. I'm free on Saturday if someone wants to put together a firing squad. <laughs> I have to admit, after completing the Nuka World DLC, we too will likely be very tired of this PA system. The next note comes six days later, on October 13th, Unresponsive Protectron. This was entered by K. O'Rourke. One of the Protectrons is completely unresponsive. It's frozen at the bottom of the escalator and blocking pedestrian traffic. It was assigned again to G. Mackey. Poor old Mackey. Was he the only maintenance guy these guys had? Who wrote, Today's lesson, Protectrons need to be returned to their pods every evening. Recommend hiring some competent people to run the transit center and not just handing over the job to some kid whose daddy works for sales. He's clearly getting frustrated with his job. The next comes two days later, on October 15th, Clogged Water Fountain again. Parents, if you're looking for a refreshing way to make it through the day, try a Nuka Cola Dark. Same great cola taste with an alcohol twist. This ticket was submitted by K. O'Rourke. More gum blocking the water fountain nozzle. And as we expect, it was assigned again to poor old G. Mackey, who wrote, Removed vile blockage yet again. Seriously, this kid is going down. I did a little Protectron programming to keep a special eye out for this one. Uh-oh. Sounds like a dangerous thing to be admitting on a company terminal. And in the final one, written seven days later on October 22nd, Monorail Door Ajar. Submitted by P. Reading. The monorail door is not closing completely. Remains slightly ajar. This one, interestingly, was assigned to J. Crosby. Oh, why not G. Mackey? Where did he go? Crosby wrote, The lining was old and had fallen out of place, preventing the door from closing. I stripped out and replaced it. That's it for the maintenance requests. The final section is on employee notifications. The first one, Service with a Smile, came from management to all employees. The Nuka Cola Corporation is determined to deliver the best possible customer experience available. The first Nuka World representatives our valuable customers will encounter are here at the Transit Center. Therefore, Transit Center employees are expected to be helpful and appear happy at all times. As a reminder, this is part of your job description. Failure to comply will result in termination without notice. Management. Talk about the cheer cheer cheeriest place in the whole world. Next, we find a note sent on October 2nd, updated schedule for fall. Nuka World's Great Halloween Spooktacular will begin next week. Reserve your tickets for this nighttime event at the main box office. To all employees, please note that the schedule has been updated for the month of October. This is our final month of the season, so let's make it count. Management. The next one came on October 16th, Employee Termination. To all employees, the Nuka Cola Corporation is currently investigating former employee Gordon Mackey after a Protectron malfunction that resulted in injury to a child. Oh no. Please do not discuss this matter with anyone outside the company management. Oh, and now we know why that last maintenance ticket was assigned to Jay Crosby. By then, Gordon Mackey had been canned. <laughs> Poor old Mackey. We can only hope that he left feeling satisfied that he tracked down the bubblegum villain. Backing out of the terminal,
We could board the Nuka Express, but first let's take a look at our surroundings. We see a stash of Mentats in a drawer next to the terminal, and in a cubbyhole on the other side we find a box of bobby pins. There's a ruined Medic Protectron on the ground. Could this be the one that Mackie tinkered with? And in the back, on top of a filing cabinet behind the door, we find a lunchbox. But inside all we get is iguana on a stick. Nuka World is pleased to announce that a small portion of your admission fee will be donated to support our men and women fighting overseas. After looting some pre-war money in a cash register and snagging a Nuka Cola on the counter, we can head east on the terminal. We find the skeleton of a woman leaning against a Nuka Cola machine, clutching a Nuka Cola in her bony hand. And on the ground next to her is a 10mm pistol. In the northeastern corner, we see two public telephones, and we find a woman's skeleton draped over one. On the ground next to her is a cap stash with a random assortment of model caps nearby. On the wall next to this is a first aid kit. Reserve your tickets now and be the first to ride our angry anaconda coaster opening soon at Safari Adventure. And then east of here, we find an employees only area with a novice locked door. We could go around and use the tracks to enter, or we could unlock this door. Inside, we find a cooler on the ground with more iguana bits. Think I've had my fill of iguana, thank you. And one bottle of Radex. We can go out an archway to the south, down to the tracks. If we turn east, we find a huge pile of radioactive toxic barrels. How did radioactive waste get dumped here? Perhaps this was dumped by the US military just after the bombs dropped. There is a man's skeleton on this pile, and at the top of the pile, we find an advanced locked safe. Inside, we find a small stash of goods, including a plasma mine and a stealth boy. On a nearby cart, we find a fusion core, and then we can head up the other side of the tracks to see if we find anything there. We don't find much, but at the very end, we do find a red toolbox beneath a skeleton, with some Radaway inside. Heading back from the tracks, there are two cars to the Nuka Express, but only one that we can enter. Inside the lead car, we can move west, where we find the engineer's seat. Here we find a lever, monorail controls. We can now click the button to travel to Nuka World and find out exactly what Gage and these raiders have in store for us. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, mantengase a la We hear static, and the automated pre-war announcer is cut off. At this point, we hear something different depending on how we chose to handle Harvey. If we didn't pass his speech check and we never found out his true purpose there, we hear the following. So, Harvey bagged another sucker to help his family. Can't believe that gag still works. I only got a minute, so you better listen, and listen good. The name's Gay. Porter Gage. And the truth is, you've been set up. This ain't no rescue mission. It's a death trap. If, however, we passed his speech checks, and we learned the truth, but we decided to come anyway... Well, look who learned the truth and still showed up. I guess Harvey played his cards right after all. I only got a minute. So you better listen, and listen good. The name's Gage. 
Porter Gage. And our mutual friend Harvey only told you half the truth. You're still heading straight into a death trap. And if we chose to kill Harvey... Nice to see you're taking me up on my offer. I only got a minute. So you better listen. And listen good. The name's Gage. Porter Gage. And the truth is, that guy Harvey you offed was just a setup to draw you into our little death trap. But if you somehow make it through alive, I have an interesting offer for you. In the meantime, have fun and put on a good show. I'll be watching. We are now arriving at the station. Please be sure to collect any children and personal belongings before exiting the Nuka Express. We arrive at the station, and as soon as we step off... Attention all my favorite undesirables up there. Casey you haven't noticed, looks like we got ourselves some fresh meat to run the gauntlet. That was the voice of Red Eye. We'll become very familiar with his voice because he also happens to work as the Nuka World Radio DJ, performing most of the songs himself. The elevator to the west, which could lead us to our freedom, is sadly turned off, so we have to turn east. We find an information desk here, where all we find is a Nuka Station information terminal. But we see that the raiders have hacked it. Gone is all of the pre-war information. Instead, we read the following. Welcome to the Gauntlet. We hope you enjoy your stay. Please choose from any of the helpful options below. The first one, you're dead. It's interesting to note that these post-apocalyptic raiders can properly spell the contraction you're. You are. A task that proves to be difficult even for people today. But inside, we find a system error. Selection, you're dead, does not point to a valid file. Please contact technical support for further assistance. So the raiders hacked this terminal, deleted what was here, and wrote a bunch of taunts. All of the other messages point to missing records as well. You're so dead, enjoy dying, and time to die. After looting two bottles of purified water behind the counter, we can move east, where we see a big enter sign, and spray painted in white on an opposite wall, this way towards the gauntlet. At the bottom, we find the corpse of Sykes. This is one of the many corpses we'll find strewn about the gauntlet. Each of these corpses tells the personal tragedy of someone who got trapped here. I explored all of these bodies and all of their personal stories in my video on the gauntlet called Bodies in the Gauntlet. In that video, we explored the entire gauntlet, disarmed every trap, listened to every taunt that came from Red Eye, solved every puzzle, and defeated every enemy in the gauntlet. You can watch that video by clicking here to learn more about the gauntlet and the stories told here. However, what I didn't do in that video is I didn't tell the primary story of the game, which picks up towards the end of the gauntlet when we open the door to the Cola Cars Arena. Inside, as soon as we move forward... Well, I'll be damned! You know what that sound means? Get your ass down to Cola Cars! The main event's about to begin! Turning east, we can walk up some stairs to a catwalk that then moves north. The door is locked, but upon tagging a nearby intercom... You got me wired up yet, Gage? Yeah, boss. Finally! Now go shut off that damn alarm! Alright, I'm on it. Uh, now where... Ah, there's my next victim now. <laughs> Don't look like much. Here's a quick rundown how this works. You go stock up, make yourself presentable. Then we're going to give these folks a show. A show where I decorate these walls here with your lovely brains. Thanks to this suit, I'm the only one that wins this fight. Period. Think you're hot getting this far. <laughs> Think again. All right, Gage. Let her through. Something tells me I'm really gonna enjoy this. With that, he opens the door. We could go down the ramp to the bottom floor, but we do see an open door directly across from us. But we can't reach it because the ramp is broken. However, if we arrive at the gauntlet wearing power armor and a jetpack, we can sail up there to find a small store of goods. Some Nuka-Cola and bobby pins on a crate, more Nuka-Cola in a nearby wooden box next to a skeleton holding a camera. Heading back down to the ground floor, we can open the door to the north. We arrive in a bloody locker room filled with gore. All right. 
right, listen the hell up. If you want to make it out of this alive, I've only got a minute. Find the intercom on the wall. I'll make it quick. Who is this? I'm the guy that's gonna get you out of this alive. So listen up. What the hell is this place? You make it through this alive, I'll explain everything. You want me to listen? Tell me now. All right, all right. The gauntlet's the overboss's pet project. Lure in whoever we can, however we can. Here, Gage has unique dialogue depending on the choices we made with Harvey. If we left Harvey alive, Gage says, Like that guy Harvey and his poor family. Total b just to get you here. And we find different options. So, he's a raider too. <laughs> he wishes. He does what we tell him. Maybe not voluntarily, but you can take that up with him later. <laughs> when I get out of here, he's a dead man. Well, if you want to live to make that dream come true, I suggest you listen up. That's it. I'm done helping people. Don't let it get to you. Harvey only did it because we threatened to kill and torture people he cares about if he doesn't. There was probably some truth in what he said. Besides, you help me, you help yourself. A decent con. He had me fooled. You can take him out on a date after all this, okay? Right now, I need you to listen up. However, if we killed Harvey, Gage says... Like I said before, that poor sap you killed at the station. Harvey, his only job was to get you here. I guess it worked well enough. But Gage has the same response to either of these two options spoken by the sole survivor. Sounds like he got what he deserved in that case. Well, it's a good thing he's dead then. Not the sympathetic type, huh? Well, good. Whatever. No one lured me in here. Think what you want. But for now, I need you to listen up. After the speech check, we can continue talking with Gage. I don't need your help. Uh, believe me, you do. Ain't walking out of here without it. Yeah? And what's in it for you? This ain't just about what's in it for me. Both of us reap the rewards if you pull this off. All right, I'm listening. My kind of gal. Look, you made it this far. You obviously got skill. But this fight coming up is rigged. You get me? Overboss Coder. His power armor set up to draw energy from the electric grid in the arena. Damn thing's invincible. You name it, someone's tried it. Miniguns, grenades, not a scratch. You get what I'm saying? No. Oh, so he's a cheating coward. Gotcha. Doesn't have a fair bone in his body. Nah, that's exactly why you're going to do something about it. Yeah, I wouldn't expect anything less from a raider. <laughs> you know us well, then. So, how do I beat him? You want to win? I stashed a weapon in the lockers. Get it. Gage mentioned a weapon, but can we find it in this wreck of a locker room? We see heads on stakes and dismembered body parts all over the floor, but quite a stash of goods in the lockers. 308 rounds on the top shelf of one, a mini nuke in another, a fusion core with 38 and 10 millimeter rounds, a combat knife next to an ammo box with the fusion cells inside, a first aid kit on a nearby bench, a mini gun on the ground. Could this be the gun he was talking about? Well, no, it turns out it's not. We find some rat away, and then in some lockers to the north, an ammo box with shotgun shells, a duffel bag with 10 millimeter rounds and a plasma grenade. And then if we turn right, we can go into the bathroom where we find a sleeping bag where we can rest and a first aid box on the wall. And if we pass through a hole in this room, we find a bit of a utility room. There's a novice locked tool case on the ground, but inside all we find is a small store of scrap. But heading around to the other side of these generators, we can loot a few Core. And if we do, Gage notices. Huh? Power to the arena is down by 30%. You do that? Not bad. Passing Anissa's body on a bench, we can turn to the southwest, where we find some 44 rounds next to an ammo box filled with gamma rounds, a fusion cell, and a second fusion core. That's all the loot we find here, but the gun that Gage was talking about is on the other side of this locker. We find it on the bottom shelf, the Thirst Zapper. 
The Thirst Zapper is the iconic weapon of the Nuka World DLC. As we find it here in the Cola Cars Arena, it's completely worthless. It does zero damage, since it's just a simple squirt gun. However, once we restore power to Nuka World and access the secure Beverage Ear Lab, a process which I talked about in my video on Project Cobalt, which you can watch here, we gain access to three recipes that we can use to modify this weapon. The first modification to the third zapper is to turn it into a Nuka Cola gun. A splash of refreshment. The Nuka Cola gun sprays irradiated Nuka Cola. It has a damage of 57 and a range of 83. Sadly, even though this version sprays irradiated Nuka Cola, the damage is not modified by the nuclear physicist perk. The next option is the Nuka Cherry gun, bursting with flavor. This version causes a small explosion, and consequently it does almost almost three times the damage of the Nuka Cola gun, dealing 172 damage. The range is also greatly increased, with a range of 119. The final ammunition type allows us to create a quantum gun vaporizes thirst. This version causes a small nuclear explosion and does almost three times the damage of the cherry gun, doing a whopping 402 damage per successful attack. And it has the same range as the cherry gun. Since the ammunition for all three types of the weaponized Thirst Zapper can only be crafted, we therefore can't find it in containers, can't purchase it from vendors, and it doesn't take advantage of the Scrounger perk, which makes this weapon a very expensive weapon and not likely to be part of any viable build. But still, the Nuka Cola, Cherry, and Quantum ammunitions make the Thirst Zapper a very fun gun. However, the version we find here in the locker room has no ammunition, just basic water. What could Gage possibly want us to do with this? Is this a squirt gun? Yeah, yeah, I know what it looks like. You're just going to have to trust me. Seriously? Is this some kind of joke? Nope. It's a perfect weapon. I've always wanted one of these. I made a great toy for Sean. Oh, great. You're a lucky day. Congratulations. Now we can get on with it. You call this a plan? You're out of your mind. Hey. It's your life. You want to hang on to it a bit longer? I suggest you hear me out. This isn't going to work. This gun is a toy. Trust me, it will. I'm not that big of a dick. Once the water hits Colter's electrically charged power armor, the circuits are going to short out. It'll kill his defenses, but you only have so much time to do some damage before they recharge. You take him out, I promise you. It'll be worth every minute spent in this gauntlet. Are you sure about this? Sure as You just be ready to take him out when he's vulnerable. Staying hydrated is half the battle, right? He ain't got a choice. All right. But if this fails, I'm taking you down with me. <laughs> if this fails, you'll be too dead to do much, but fair enough. Consider it done. That's what I like to hear. All right. It's time. I'll open the door. See you on the other side. With that, Gage opens the door to the Cola Cars Arena. Heading southwest, we can turn left and head down the hallway to the door to the arena, where we find Coulter egging on the crowd. All right! Disciples! Are you ready for blood? <laughs> The door opens and we immediately blast Coulter with water. This shorts out his electrified suit of power armor, giving us a chance to land some hits. But this confuses both Coulter and Red Eye. I did this on my character when she was really squishy, but a healthy dose of time-slowing chems and a whole bunch of stim packs, and I was finally successful. <laughs> Yeah. 
Cobra Boss. This chick? Are you sure, Gage? You better know what the hell you're doing. Hey, we talked about this. She survived the gauntlet. She was smart enough to take my advice, strong enough to kill Coulter. She's what we need. How about we show some respect for our new leader, eh? She'll get respect when she earns respect. Amen. All right, all right. Now get the hell out of here. I'll show the boss around. And with that, the crowd wanders off. But we're still locked inside the Kolokar's arena. What's the deal, Gage? <clears throat> What did I tell you? Worked like a charm. So you really wanted the Overboss dead? Dead? Out of the way? What's the difference? Either way, good riddance. The plan was a success. Death by squirt gun. I'd love to see the message on his tombstone. Tell me about it. I wish I had a better look at his face when the suit shorted out. That guy was nothing. I've had tougher challenges. Without me, I'd be scraping your guts off the floor. Thanks to you. Not a bad plan. And what do you know? It worked. I get that you have no idea what's going on and everything is coming at you real fast. But you need to listen. Taking out Colder wasn't just a last-minute decision. It was something a few of us here have been working on for a while. Now that he's actually gone, got ourselves a vacancy in the overboss department. And guess what? You just got the job. All I'm asking is that you trust me on this and give it a shot. I swear, it'll be worth it. First you lure me in here, and now you want me to run the place. Something like that. Let me explain. Sure, sure. And while you're at it, I suppose next you'll be offering me a million caps. All right, all right. I get it. You don't trust me. But I swear, this is the big score. You want me to lead a bunch of raiders? You've got to be kidding me. Before you start pissing all over the plan, why don't you take a minute to hear me out? Let's just say you've got my attention. Good. Then listen up, because I've got a lot to say. There are three raider gangs that run the show at Nuka World. The Disciples, the Operators, and the Pack. And yeah, if the names didn't give it away, these ain't your typical raiders. These morons don't exactly play nice with each other. Thanks to Coulter, this place is a powder keg just waiting to blow sky high. One wrong move, and we're going to have a bloodbath on our hands. I think you have what it takes to turn things around and keep these gangs from tearing each other apart. Why me? I'm sure you're better suited for the job. We'll get into that later. Fine. But it better pay well. I'm not doing this for free. Don't worry. If it's caps you want, you'll be swimming in them soon enough. If this is a trick, I'll make sure you end up like Coulter. See? You're fitting in already. Sounds like fun. Count me in. That's the spirit. Now, I'm sure you got a lot of questions. But this ain't the place. Meet me at the Overbosses, your new quarters, the restaurant on top of good old Fizz Top Mountain. We can talk there. Just let me get that door for you. There. Gage heads over to a nearby terminal and unlocks the door. As soon as he does, we complete, taken for a ride, and we can try to talk with him as he walks out. Let's keep the conversating between us, okay? Meet me in the Overboss quarters. As he walks away, we begin the quest, an ambitious plan. We need to track him down and speak with him at the Overboss's quarters. Before we go, we can head back to Overboss Coulter to loot his unique suit of power armor. This is called the Overboss Power Armor, which deals energy damage to nearby enemies, much like the Tesla armor from the Automatron DLC. This is a unique version of Raider Power Armor, unique 
both in the way it looks and in its stats. Coulter's power armor has double the damage resistance of a typical Raider set of power armor. It's also much more balanced. Raider power armor has half the energy resistance as damage resistance, but Coulter's suit here has equal damage and energy resistance. For the helm, it has 220 damage and energy with 150 rad. To put that in perspective, the regular Raider power armor helm has 100 damage, 50 energy, and 150 radiation resistance. Even when upgraded to Raider Mark II, it only improves damage resistance by 20. The chest piece has 320 damage and energy resistance, with 300 rad resistance, compared to the upgraded Raiders 220, 100, and 300, which is significantly better. Not to mention the legendary effect that deals energy damage to nearby enemies. The Overboss Torso is one of the few power armor pieces in the entire game with the legendary effect. The rest of the appendages are also significantly better, with 170 damage and energy, and 150 radiation resistance, compared to the Raider Armor Mark II's 70 damage, 25 energy, and 150 radiation resistance. It's significantly better than Raider Power Armor, but not that great when compared to other Power Armors. A fully upgraded T-45F suit, for example, is only slightly worse than the Overboss set. All other suits are much better. Heading out of the arena, we can move towards the seats, where the raiders were ogling the fight. We find an elevator that can lead us up to the box seats at the top. Here we see little nooks decorated for each of the raider tribes. An operator nook with classy seats, a disciple's nook with blood and gore, but not much to loot. Heading downstairs, we can view the other seats. In the pack section, we see filthy cages, but all we really find is one chem box on a post. Heading to the western side of this room, we find two doors out, and between them, a bay of lockers. There's minor loot in the lockers. Continuing south, we find a few more lockers to loot, and then we find an employee desk. There's pre-war money in the registers, some medicine in a first aid box on a bottom shelf, and here we find a terminal, Cola Cars Terminal. Inside, we find three messages. The first message index contains five notes. In the first, safety inspection results. Guys, we need to be a lot more diligent when we do our end-of-day walkthroughs. Goodwin found three belts loose on his inspection last week. One of them was half torn out. The last thing we need is some kid getting knocked out onto the arena floor while the cars are running. Crap rolls downhill, people. Goodwin dumps it on me, I dump it on you. If this keeps up, I'm gonna need to make an example of someone. Let's get our act together and make sure that doesn't happen. Rob. Goodness, this sounds like a fun work environment. In the next one, Nira. When approached by guests who have questions about the park, make sure you direct them to Nira. Nira is not only our park's proud mascot, but she is a valuable source of information. Moreover, we want as many guests as possible participating in our fun and exciting Park Medallion Collection Challenge. Our surveys have shown time and time again that it's one of our visitors' favorite activities, not only because it steers them towards our most exciting attractions, but also because it rewards them for completing the activity. Guests who participate in the Park Medallion search tend to score several points higher in overall satisfaction. So let's give everyone the chance to make the most of their Nuka World adventure. JCB, John Caleb Bradburton, the founder of Nuka World. He is alluding here to a bit of a scavenger hunt that we can participate in later. Nira is still alive and well 200 years later, although she is a bit altered. We'll track her down and have a chat in a little bit. Next up, the Hidden Cappy Contest and you. Over the past several days, we've received some troubling reports regarding the compliance of park employees with the rules for the Cappy Scavenger Hunt Contest. In the event that these lapses are due to a lack of clarity regarding what is and is not acceptable behavior, please review this message carefully. Under no circumstances shall any park employee provide a hint suggestion, or other forms of direction to any park guest regarding the location of any hidden cappy image. Should any such behavior be observed and reported, punitive measures will be swiftly taken, up to and including immediate termination. The proper way to respond to such inquiries is to encourage persistence. The contest is challenging by design, and the reward, unique. That reward must be earned by diligence and observation on the part of our guests, not by cheating and favoritism on the part of our park employees. Thank you for your cooperation in this matter. T. O'Connor, Director of Human Resources. 
This, of course, is a reference to the Cappy in a Haystack side quest that I covered in a previous video. When I did my videos on each of the Nuka World parks, I showed where you can find the hidden Cappies there. And then in my video on the Nuka Nuka Launcher, I showed off our rewards for completing that quest. You can watch that video by clicking here. In the next one, Quantum Quantum Quantum! This is an exciting time for all of us. Nuka-Cola Quantum has made its public debut, featuring one of the most unique flavors we've ever produced, not to mention a visually striking appearance. It is truly a time for celebration. I encourage everyone to get into the spirit of this landmark event by promoting Nuka-Cola Quantum at every opportunity. Let all of our guests know just how amazing and irresistible you find the flavor of Nuka-Cola Quantum to be. Suggest that our patrons try some at their next available opportunity, if not right away. We have a considerable inventory to move, but more importantly, we want to make the best first impression possible. And we'll only have that opportunity once, right now. Those employees who are seen to demonstrate particular enthusiasm towards Nuka-Cola Quantum will be awarded a discretionary bonus. Let's get out there and earn it! With your help, I believe we can make this the greatest product launch in the history of the Nuka-Cola Corporation. John Caleb Bradburton it's no wonder we found this on the terminal, because Nuka-Cola Quantum was launched the very day the bombs dropped. And the final note, closed Monday and Tuesday, is a simple reminder to employees. Everyone, remember that we're shut down on Monday and Tuesday of next week for the electrical work. Those of you who weren't reassigned can stay home. And before you ask, no, it's not paid leave. Sorry, folks. Hope you can at least enjoy the downtime. See you back on Wednesday, Rob. More of that wonderful, happy work culture on display here. Backing out of the message index, we can explore the maintenance log. Here we see a simple list of recent maintenance done to the cars. We see Boone and Edgemont doing most of the work. Poor Boone had to clean a floor after a sick child. And on the second page, we see an emergency cab cleaning after child bodily functions accident. Ugh. Backing out of this, we find an employee log. Schedule. Current shift schedule is posted below. If you need unscheduled time off, call me. The more advance notice, the better. If you fail to show up for a shift without notice, bad things will happen. Thanks, guys. Rob. We then get to learn the names of some of the employees who worked here. Rob, Liz, Kevin, Mike, Ryan, Nick, and Maria. And that's it for the Cola Cars Terminal. Now, we can open the doors to the west to see exactly what we've gotten ourselves into. And we arrive just outside Nuka Town, USA. We have to explore Nuka Town, USA on our way to Gage. We'll explore every corner of this town, talk with every raider, and meet every slave in tomorrow's video. Welcome to my series on Nuka World. This series is going to be a bit different from the other DLC series I've done and that I've already produced a whole lot of content for it. If you check out my Nuka World playlist, which I link to below, you'll see that I've already got about 50 videos made. But what I've published so far has mostly been location exploration and the lore of side quests. I haven't told the story of the Raiders yet, which is what I'm going to do now with this series. We'll start here, talk to every Raider faction, every raider member, complete all of their quests, and learn their entire story. I'll be sure to manually arrange all of the videos in my Nuka World playlist so that they make sense, and so that when I finish this series you can watch them all in order. I'm using my railroad character for this series because she is the only one of my characters who hasn't explored Nuka World yet. While doing this series, I do want to explore every option, so you're going to see me make decisions with her that are outside her character. But I'm just doing that for for the sake of the video. My railroad character does not believe in the philosophy of these raiders, so in my gameplay, I made very different decisions than what you'll see me do in these videos. Also in this series, I go out of my way to explore every dialogue option, just so you can see what it is. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the next episode in this series. I have a bunch of unique shirts that you can't find anywhere else, with a bunch of lovingly crafted designs. My designs come on shirts in a wide array of colors and in a variety of of both men's and women's sizes. They also appear on other items, pillows, posters, prints, mugs, iPhone cases, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do, and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with episode 2.